this video, I will show you what is task.yield and where to use it. Here we have my sorting demo application that maybe you saw in previous episodes. If I click on sort, it starts sorting. But as you can see, we are displaying animations and we are giving the feedback to the user that we are touching one element that we are comparing against and then we are moving it. All those things are pretty impressive. Now, I will show you what I did for making this animation or this effect. Let me stop this for now. This is a sorting view. And the sorting view, once I press the button, the start sorting, I create a task that I show you in a previous video about cancellation. And the important part right now is this, the sorting algorithm. We choose in this case bubble, but it could be uh, merge or any other in this application. But if we click on here, we can select the multiple applications in this app. Let me go right away here with the first one, bubble. And here is the algorithm that I will explain in another video. But the important part here is that, uh, well, first is checking cancellation again, that I talked in a previous episode. In here, we are actually making the progress of uh, comparing and swapping elements. But the important point of the video is this little guy here, await.delay. This is a function that I created myself, that is an asynchronous function. But if we click on it, you will see that we are getting a duration from this sorting settings. If we press here, we can see that we have a, a set of settings in this uh, screen. We can enable or disable the amount of time for the animation. We can sh hide or show some elements, for example, from the bar values, etc. And the thing is that we can manipulate the amount of time the animation should transition from one animation to another. So the higher the duration, the slower will be for the user to wait for this transition. Now, let me go back a little bit. And here we are getting what is in the sorting settings that we select. If we got something uh, like, I mean, the duration is different from zero seconds, then we will execute task.sleep. And task.sleep is mostly a pretty useful method to stop the execution of an application for some amount of time. This is pretty common, and I think most of you already know this guy. However, when we have duration equal to zero seconds, instead of that, I'm using await.taskyield. And if we click on the documentation, it's basically saying that it suspends the current task and allows other tasks to execute. Basically, and I don't want to read this, but basically this method, it's similar as task.sleep. The big difference is that we are not setting an amount of time for allowing other tasks to execute. It is up to the system to decide. And most of the time it's just some milliseconds. And depending if there are other tasks waiting for that, if there's nothing, basically this task.yield will resume the progress of the current task immediately. This is good if you literally want to just give some time, unless for some many seconds to the application to run other additional things or start running other work and allowing to, you know, make your app faster than just making everything in sequential order. And also it's good if what you want is not like setting some time for waiting your application. This is mostly, again, for giving additional time for others to start, okay? It can be useful, and I know most of you will stay on this particular type of sleep because I think it's like more intuitive to use, but it's good that if you find this piece of code in an application, well, just think about it. It's like a brother of that of sleep, but not setting time and basically just releasing or stopping this the work of the current task for a few milliseconds or it's up to the system to decide what is the best for executing another task. If I go back here, 
what I used is that if I'm setting an amount of duration, I will use that task.sleep internally. So let me go back here. And okay, the work is doing. Now, if I click again on the settings, and if I set zero, now instead I'm gonna use task.sleep. And let's see what happened. Yeah, it's pretty fast. <laughs> This is when you don't have enough time and you need to hurry because you need to go to school or to work. So here it is. Now, if we, yeah, and you can see it's pretty fast even that you are not seeing the, the animations in transition mode, it's just instant. Now, if we select another algorithm, for example, merge, and we select another different set. For example, here we are using 20 elements. Let me use 100. Yeah, it's a lot. Let me remove the values here. And let's see what happened. Look, it's pretty fast. So at least for the use case of my application, it's good to have this option because it's like, okay, let's go to the point and sort it and give me some feedback to visualize what is going on and also allowing this application to uh, start working on other comparisons. And this is more useful. For example, I have this particular parallel merge that as you might imagine is a merge short algorithm, but in parallel. If we do that, it's clearly here that we are splitting the work into two and then one is starting and then allowing the other to give some time to start the next task, etc. So it's pretty fast. That is what they wanted to show you with this. You have another option to use in your application if you need it. That's all for me. Remember, my name is Pete and this, this is Ifan Tips. Thanks for watching and have a great day.